Hello there, and welcome to Casual Fridays, the podcast where weekly themes are discussed through personal experiences, anecdotes, and some storytelling. I am your host, Dada, and this podcast is part of my I Read Aloud channel on YouTube, where I read fairy tales, short stories, children's stories, poetry, letters, and other excerpts. So if you like such content, make sure to subscribe. You'll find me in the search box on YouTube under at I Read Aloud. You can also find me on Instagram, TikTok, and X, also under at I Read Aloud. I also want you to know that this podcast airs every Friday on the following platforms, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Samsung Podcasts, Podcast Index, Listen Notes, RSS, and Spotify. Today's episode is on hate, and we'll be discussing hate and pain, hate and love, hate and jealousy, desire and inadequacy, hate and misunderstandings, and hate of yourself. I think we use the word hate too much, and we do it without noticing we're doing it. As children, we say, I hate broccoli, I hate school, I hate my friend, I hate my teacher, I hate my parents. And our inner child still hates as we grow older. I hate my job, I hate my life, I hate myself, I hate my body, I hate my parents, I hate my ex, I hate my boss, and the hate goes on and on. Are we inviting toxicity into our lives without even noticing it by using the word hate this much? Let us explore the relationship of hate with other emotions in our lives and try and discover the relevance there. Does hate sometimes come from pain? James Baldwin once said, I imagine one of the reasons people cling to their hate so stubbornly is because they sense once hate is gone, they will be forced to deal with pain. And I see this strongly happens in the case of losing someone you love in a tragedy, such as war or an accident. It would then be easier to focus on hating the government or political party who was on the opposite side of the fence or hate the person who was also involved in the accident and survived. So, instead of grieving and feeling the pain of loss, you get lost in hate and get stuck in life and maybe even drown your sorrows in addictions just so you do not feel the pain. On the other hand, Tacitus said, It is human nature to hate him whom you have injured. And maybe here the example that works well is stabbing a friend or a co-worker in the back and hating them for the situation they put you in. So instead of owning up to the part you played in the scenario, you rely on hate to get you through the day and through life, really all to avoid responsibility and to deny any culpability. Now, is love a source of hate? Many believe that you can only hate an ex-lover or an ex-friend because you still love them. This means that it is only when all feelings of love dissipate that you are able to let go of the hate and hopefully forgive and maybe even forget. Sir Walter Raleigh once wrote, Hatreds are the cinders of affection. However, Ellie Weisel said, The opposite of love is not hate, it is indifference. And by God, did that hit home when I read it. I have experienced firsthand that indifference is worse than hate. For someone to simply not care is crushing to the heart and to the soul, and may you never experience it. Still, I will take a sip of love any day, come what may, hatred, indifference, whatever, at least I'd have loved. And you know the saying, to have loved and lost is better than to have never loved at all? Well, I do live by that creed. Unfortunately, though, this episode is not on love but on hate, so let's get back on track. I will discuss now hate and jealousy Hate and desire, hate and inadequacy, they they all go hand in hand in the same sphere. Jerry Lewis said, People hate me because I am a multifaceted, talented, wealthy, internationally famous genius. 
And even though this might ring a bit of ego, it has lots of truth in it. Socrates once said, From the deepest desires often come the deadliest hate. People generally hate rich people, for example. He must be a gangster, we say, made his money off of other people's backs, we say. His is dirty money, we say. He must be money laundering to be this rich, we say. Oh, he doesn't pay his taxes and that's why he's so rich, we say. Yeah, he was blessed with so much money, but look at what he spends it on. If only he'd spend that money on helping the world and ending world hunger, wouldn't that be better? And we say, he's filthy rich, but so stingy and does not know how to enjoy his money. And you want to convince me that all these words do not reek of jealousy and unachieved desire? And that these words don't reek of our own inadequacies to be that rich and reeks of frustrations of our constant failings? A modern-day thought trend that money is energy and that money energy is simply a reflection of you and your energy is something I'd like to discuss today. Danny Morrill says, You want to have money? I will tell you how to get it. Go into the past and heal the story you have about money that caused you to fear money or say that money was scarce or whatever the case may be. And you're going to discover that money is literally you. It's just an energetic, real-world, tangible representation of you. When you become an abundant being, you receive abundance. And this can happen, of course, only through healing your relationship with money. So, maybe it is time to appreciate rich people and strive to one day become rich ourselves by working on our emotional and energetic bodies. Just a thought, take it or leave it. Now, to move on to the following section, John Lennon said, Don't hate what you don't understand. And Charles Caleb Colton said, We hate some persons because we don't know them, and you will not know them because we hate them. I've touched on this subject in one of my previous episodes titled The Other, and I said there that the only way to accept another who is very different from us is to get to know them on a personal level, because it's only then that we see them as human beings like us in the same human struggle called life. So I won't say much on this topic and on this part because you can always go back and listen to the episode, the other, where I spoke a lot on this section. And this brings me to the part of the episode that is saddest and dearest to my heart, your hate of yourself or at least parts of yourself and accepting your words as true and living with them as truth. When I read this following quote by Louis C.K., I felt truly sad. He said, I don't stop eating when I'm full. The meal isn't over when I am full. It's over when I hate myself. And I thought, oh my, what a love-hate relationship this must be with food. And then I wondered if bulimics and anorexics and others with food disorders feel the same way about food and themselves. I mean, to hate yourself because of what you eat? That, for me, would be what a living hell is all about. Food is a source of nourishment, and food is to be enjoyed in every bite. Food is fuel for the body. And if you know how to cook good food, or have the capacity to order in good food, or go out and dine on some good food, the pleasure of it, to reach the state of hating yourself so much that you use food as punishment, I could cry right now at the thought of it. Your body is a vessel that helps you transport yourself from one place to another, that allows you to discover the wonders of the world and to help you reach a state of awe, even trance at these wonders. Your body helps you discover the world through your five senses, smell, taste, touch, sight, hearing. And if you allow yourself to be amazed at the world because of how you experience it through your senses, then you cannot but love your body, no matter how you look like. Who cares how you look like? Is it petty and jealous people? Who cares about what we call society's norms? 
society is in a shambles. Just look around you and at all the chaos, the devastation, the destruction. <laughs> this is this is society is making. And you allow that society to dictate to you how you should look like, how you should exist, how you should hate yourself. Look down at your hands and feet right now and love them. Look at your torso right now and love it. Look at your face in the mirror right now and love it. Be thankful that you have a body, a physical body that could bring you so much joy and pleasure if you allow yourself the chance to explore its possibilities. And please enjoy your food. There are so many on this earth that do not have access to your delicious, succulent, mouth-watering food. And eat as much as you desire and eat while in a state of joy and gratitude. And I will leave you with these words from David Hume. To hate, to love, to think, to feel, to see, all this is nothing but to perceive meaning that all human experience, whether positive or negative, is just that, an experience. And hopefully, some experiences bring forth self-knowledge and self-growth and self-love. And when you see life as an experience, maybe even as an experiment, you won't take yourself so seriously, and you won't live in hate so much. Well... This brings me to the end of this episode. Next week's topic shall be on karma. I hope you'll tune in then. For now, I wish you a lovely weekend and I send you all my love. Till next Friday.